Solana mainnet's its blazing speed and quick block time makes accessing real-time data both crucial and challenging. So choosing a right approach is essential for running reliable and scalable applications. In this video, we will explore three effective approaches to access real-time Solana data, each tailored for a different use case. So without any ado, let's jump into it. Quicknode offers three approaches for accessing real-time Solana blockchain data. The first one is WebSockets, where you can create WebSocket subscriptions. Second one is Yellowstone GRPC. And the third one is Quicknode Streams. So WebSockets is the traditional and most straightforward way to get real-time data from the Solana blockchain, where what you do is you establish a bi-directional connection with the Solana blockchain via a node and you get the data back. So what happens is you send a request via WebSocket, the node gives you back a handshake and then a bi-directional connection is set up, which is a TCP connection. So you can set up a WebSocket for getting block data, for getting slot data, account updates, events, etc. And whenever that occurs or whenever there is an update on the information for whatever you are subscribing for, you get the data back via this bi-directional connection you have established with WebSockets. So to get started with WebSockets, you need to go to your Quicknote dashboard, create a Solana endpoint. And once it's created, go to the Solana endpoint and copy the WebSocket provider URL. So how it works is first you need to establish the connection with the WebSocket and then you need to put a filter for whatever change you want to create the WebSocket connection for. Over here, we are establishing a WebSocket connection for on slot change WebSocket method. So if we run it, now what happened is the connection got established and whenever there is a new slot, we will get the data back from the WebSocket as you are seeing on the screen now. The following are the considerations or characteristics of WebSockets. So the setup complexity of WebSockets is low because it has native Solana JSON RPC support. The infra management for WebSocket is self-managed because you'll have to manage the WebSocket connections. When it comes to historical data, WebSocket connections or WebSocket endpoints themselves do not have historical data support, but you can get historical data via a HTTP RPC endpoint by sending HTTP RPC requests. Then the latency on WebSockets is low. Data transformation in a WebSocket setup happens on the client side where you get the data from the blockchain via WebSocket and you will have to do the transformation on your end, which is the client side. And for WebSockets, it's a single connection destination where you can just set up a WebSocket, a particular WebSocket for a single destination. Reliability of WebSockets is not that great because WebSockets tend to disconnect a lot and you will have to manage manually in your script the reconnection of those websockets with the blockchain when talking about suitable use cases websockets are most suitable for development and web-based applications and now let's talk about grpc which is available via yellowstone grpc endpoint on quicknode so the yellowstone grpc api uses the geyser plugin to provide enterprise grade data and enterprise grade volume of data without burdening the validators so in the yellowstone grpc api what needs to happen is there needs to be a geyser plugin framework set up on the validator side plus on the client side or on the customer side you need to make a setup to handle the grpc request so what happens is you set in a request or you set up a grpc connection to the validator with the geyser plugin framework for example let's say you want to subscribe for a particular account update so you send a request and whenever there is an update to that account the yellowstone grpc api will keep on streaming that data to you so this setup has very much low latency compared to all the other setups and approaches so this is very much suitable for high frequency tradings now to get started with yellowstone grpc api what you need to do is you need to again go to your quick note endpoint go to the add-on section look for the yellowstone grpc add-on so to install that what you will need to do is you will need to click on explore as you can see over here and then just click on install 
and once installed you will be able to find it under the installed add-ons of your endpoint in the add-ons tab the setup for yellowstone grpc looks like this where you will first have to provide your endpoint url from quicknode and then your token of your endpoint url and then you will have to initialize the function where you will have to initialize the client with the url and token then you will need to set up your data handlers on your site where you will need to handle the incoming data you will need to create the subscription request send the subscription request to the grpc api and then you will need some functions to handle and transform the data on your end so if we run this As you can see, the subscription has been established and we are getting real time Solana slot data as the slots are coming in or being created on the blockchain. And you can see the speed is so fast because uh, this is the fastest way with lowest latency to get the data from the Solana blockchain. Now let's talk about Yellowstone GRPC APIs considerations and characteristics. So. The setup complexity of Yellowstone gRPC API, which uses Kaiser plugin, is medium because it requires gRPC setup on the client side where you need to handle the data. Plus, it also requires additional Kaiser plugin on the node side or the validator side. The infra management part is uh, self managed. In terms of historical data, Yellowstone gRPC API cannot get you historical data. In terms of latency, it's the lowest data transformation needs to happen on the customer server side via gRPC. As we saw that we need to handle the data coming in from the gRPC API. So that needs to be taken care by the customer and destination. It's a single endpoint, So you get single destination. Then in terms of reliability, it has some built in reconnection logic so that you don't have to manually handle the reconnection every time. And it's best suited for high frequency trading systems or custom indexers and in cases where you want or need direct validator access. Now let's talk about quick note streams, which helps you build your data pipelines all on QuickNote platform. You do not need to set up anything. So QuickNote Streams is a new kind of tool using which you can set up your entire data pipeline on just one platform. So as you can see in this diagram, QuickNote Stream can stream to multiple destinations using the HTTP protocol and everything from data handling, data transformation, Sending the data retries happens on the QuickNote platform itself. Now let's see how we can set it up in the QuickNote platform. So once you're logged in to your QuickNote dashboard, you'll need to go to streams, then click on create streams. Then of course you'll need to select Solana, Solana mainnet. And then what you can do is you can add a starting block and a end block. You can also set up block delays and reorg handling then click on next. Then for Solana, you can choose from two data sets, which is block and block with locks. So streams also lets you do backfilling of historical data. So if you are doing that, you can enter batch sizes. For example, let's say that you want five blocks to be delivered to you at one time. You can do that. You can do up till 10 for Solana. So since we will be getting latest blocks, we will have this unchecked because it's irrelevant for latest blocks. Then this is how the raw payload would look like. But the best part with streams is that you can customize the payload on the QuickNode server side. You can also see some templated streams filters over here. So the customization which you do on the stream side is via filters. You can add a filter on your stream and get the transformed fully customized payload on your end or on your destination's end. So you can do pump.fund trade, new tokens, filter transactions by addresses and programs, track solved token transfers. The possibilities are endless. You can basically filter anything. You just have to write a filter code 
and you will get the filter data on your end. So if you want to write your own filter code, you will be able to do that as well, where you can write your own filter logic and run the test and see the data on your end. So if you save and close, click on next, then you can set up a destination. So you can set up S3 bucket, you can set up Postgres and Snowflake, of course, a webhook as well, but you need to be on a specific plan for those. For now, I'll just set up webhook. So I'll just get a temporary webhook from this website and send the data over there. You can also check the connection where it should send a ping to the webhook, as you can see here. And you can also send a payload example on your destination site so that you can be prepared or so that you can be aware beforehand what your payload would look like. So this is how our payload would look like. Now, if we create the stream, it should send a payload to the webhook every time a new block is created. So as you can see, we have already started getting new blocks. So this is how streams work. Now let's look at some considerations and characteristics for QuickNote streams. So in terms of setup complexity, it's very low as you have UI based configuration. You can also set up streams via REST API, but there is a UI as well. In terms of infra management, it's fully managed by QuickNode. So you do not need to worry about anything. Streams does have support for historical data because it has built in backfilling support. In terms of latency, it's low to medium. For data transformation, it occurs on QuickNode server side via filters, as we saw that we can transform data on QuickNode's server side using filters. So you do not need to worry about transforming the data on your end or client side. In terms of destinations, you can set up multiple destinations like Webhook, S3 Bucket, PostgreSQL, Snowflake. Then in terms of reliability, it's uh, guaranteed delivery with automatic retries. You do not need to configure your own retry logic or you do not need to worry about dropping connections because the data will be delivered to you guaranteed. And you can also set up number of retries. The stream is best suitable for anyone who is trying to build a data pipeline for their project. For example, analytic platforms, block explorers, anyone who needs data at a very large scale or who need to index data. Then anyone who has multi destination needs, they can use streams as well. So basically streams can be used for multiple use cases without the need for building your own data pipelines. So these were the three approaches using which you can get real time Solana blockchain data. Hope you learned something from this video. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the QuickNode YouTube channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.